back, we are going to make a quick card using a new die set from Cat Scrappiness and uh, a pretty recent release. Um, so it is this die set. I will have to look up the exact name of it, and I'll put it on the screen. But essentially, it gives you sort of an ocean view. It gives you a stitched border, and you have sort of a beach piece that basically... Um, goes over this, so you have a lot of dimension in with basically like two passes through your die cutter. I actually didn't wind up using the stitched border, but I have it saved for a future project. Additionally, I am using this stamp set, and we're using the turtle as sort of our focal image. Uh, I think it's called Friends Under the Sea. Again, I'll throw it on the screen if I figure that out. So I grabbed a sentiment from here that says your turtle... Wow, that would help, wouldn't it? You're totally awesome. And we cut out all these little... Uh, I guess that's hard to see. Sorry about that. Let's... Just, all these little sea plants, essentially. There you can see them better. Anyway. And then, of course, there's a Friends Under the Sea paper pad where the two pattern papers we're using are from. Um, similar thing. You get four of each design double-sided, six by six. It's sort of a cardstock weight, uh, kind of like the last cat scrappiness pads we've looked at. You have a little, some that are, have very sort of large-scale prints, and then you have a lot of sort of uh, just sort of generalized, like general kind of patterns that would be more usable. I wanted to use the bubbles. The die set also comes with a couple, uh, with six individual bubbles that it will cut out, but I just like using the background. This is the inset piece. As you can see, you get a lot of embossed detail. I want to color this briefly with just a little bit of green-gray, I think. And I might use... Let's try like a gray 04 and see if that's even visible. Oh, it is. So I'm just going to go in here quick and just do the edges a little bit. Then I'm going to hit this with a green-gray to just sort of... I'm going to put these more in shadow as they're going down, too. Um, since I didn't want this video to be an hour long, I pre-colored everything else, but I figured we could do this last little bit together. And for this, I basically used uh, Crafty Al's patented, or maybe not, um, easy coloring technique, which is basically to just use a tri-blend and then just sort of use the colors which are within the tri-blend. Whoops, we lost a cap. That must not have been on there very well. There we go. So that's just a little bit of... This is green-gray one, which you saw if you saw my uh, Copic coloring video, which is going to give it a little bit of a greener look than... It just being gray. Uh, as mentioned, like these rock pieces look kind of weird, but uh, the beach part is going to actually cover those up. And here, let's go in with more of a brown. This is warm gray 05, which is a color I like a lot, so that's probably not overly surprising. Obviously, because we're using sort of a mid-tone gray, these are going to come out... More in shadow, which kind of makes sense from, a, as you can see, when it dries, you get a better, the green comes out a little bit more than uh, when it's wet. Anyway, I think it makes sense in the context of this scene, because that would sort of be like, if the lip of the cave was casting a shadow, like these would probably look a little bit more in shadow. We also have... Uh, all these little pieces that we can use. I think I'll use the rocks on the beach. I also took one of the sentiments and then did a little ink blending and cut a banner that says you're totally awesome. I'm kind of thinking I might actually put this at the top. And then uh, for this challenge, there are four colors in the color palette. It's basically sand, which is... This is sort of a more saturated version, but basically sandy brown, dark blue teal blue, and white. We don't have a lot of white in this one, but uh, we do have a little in the starfish pattern and, in, or, you know, in the eyes of the turtle and whatnot. So I think we're pretty much good. 
green is not an official color as such. It's more of a teal, but I, I like the idea of like a more bright green to sort of liven this up a little bit. So the first thing I want to do, and we're going to be using glue for pretty much all of this, just for our own sanity, because these are pretty fine pieces and it would be relatively challenging, unless you're way more skilled than me, probably, to actually uh, try and use tape runner on this. So this is the back. You can kind of tell because you sort of have the more cut edge of the die cut where it's sort of more beveled on the front. Some people call that the nice side and the less nice side. But, you know, whatever works for you. And then I'm just going to lay this down and then I think all we really need to do is just sort of even this up. Of course, this layer is going to be hidden, so it's a little bit less of an issue. Now we're going to flip it over, and you can use any sort of tool of your choice. I will use, since we're doing cat scrappiness, it seems fitting to use the bone folder to do this. But basically, we just want to make sure all that glue adheres, particularly with the leaves, because they're probably the finest piece here, to make sure that... Uh, the glue is going to keep them stuck down. Since we are using a glitter card base for this, we're probably going to wind up gluing basically everything on this card, um, which isn't good or bad. Uh, um, and I think that we can... I'll probably put the land on, and then we'll glue this to the base, because I don't want to... I don't really want to fiddle with the little pieces or with our embellishments. Uh, I don't think this is actually... This wasn't part of the release as such, but these are the epoxy embellishments that Cat Scrappiness has in like 15 colors. So I'm a big fan of them. You've probably seen them on cards all over the place. So anyway, there's that. And the cool thing is once this, people are calling this the land or the shore, I guess. There's a really good, if you look on the Cat Scrappiness channel, um, a Creative Muse did a really good uh, overview of this particular set. I also like liquid glue for stuff like this because it really sort of allows you to uh, play with it a little bit. Now there is a little bit of a hole there, but I think that'll be fine. I'll just put a rock there to uh, cover that up. And as you can see, like you have a lot of layers, but this isn't actually all that thick. Well, that part isn't very well down, is it? So we'll just do that a little bit, just to make sure. There we go. Um, I am using my favorite Linco glue. I've actually had that work pretty well for glitter paper, but if you want a more potent glue, obviously those exist. You could use a, a strong glue like a mono or connect or whatever your favorite is. So I think that's going to look pretty cool. So with this, I... Isn't it a shame we're wasting this paper? I'm so glad I have, like, extras of these, because this was one of my favorite papers here. And I think if you cut along the actual edge of the wave, it would be really neat, because the whale in this set is kind of uh, coming up and shooting water out of its blowhole. So, I mean, I think it would be pretty neat to uh, have sort of waves with the whale coming out. I'm actually really excited. Uh, you've probably seen it in other videos here, but um, there's a 3D box die that actually has a wave add-on that I think would be just perfect for this. And I really kind of like stuff like this, that it doesn't add a lot of bulk. Um, if you look at the Cat Scrappiness video, uh, you'll see that, like, this piece is actually popped up a little bit, and there's a lot more embellishment on the land, so, I mean, that's a, that's also an option. So let me just put our rocks down, probably, like, here and here, I think. We shall see. Well, that's not going to help us. Ah. My pokey tool is kind of... I'm really bashing up the wax. This was one I got off Amazon, but I think the uh, Cat Scrappiness also sells one, which is probably way better made. So we will cover that rock. 
And, you know, we don't have to be super duper like accurate here. I will likely come back in and just color these a little bit once that glue adheres a little more just to kind of give them a little bit more of a offset from everything else. Let's see. Now I'd really like I think I'd like my seaweed he in here. Just the one with the rock. Whoops, there goes a fish. So I think I will just sort of Put that here. I may put something in front of it because this isn't quite tucked in. So I'll just throw a little more glue here. There we go. And I think I'll grab one of these guys and just do this. And this other one, I think we can just put over here somewhere. There we go. I don't often make scene cards like this, so I'm curious if you guys are fans or not. Um, but I do like them quite a bit. So let's get our turtle in. We have two other fish we can position, but I would like to kind of get our guy or gal or whichever put in, because it's probably the largest thing. We could actually oop, wrong end. There we go. I think we could actually Put her over the sea. I think that would look pretty neat. Have her sort of. Eh, I think where we had it made the most sense. Let me just glue, add a little more glue. But that's the nice part about wet glue. You can kind of pick it up and reposition. I do kind of like it here, sort of overlaying that. I'll just put a fish here, maybe one up here. Just have this fish be sort of pointing more towards the center of the card to sort of bring your eyes in. Let me just... Sure we have good adherence on little turtle friend. And I think we're going to put the sentiment up here. The other option is you could put it here as well. Or I mean, really, you could put it anywhere. Like we could do this, and that would sort of cover that gap. Like especially if we do it kind of like that because there's this little gap here between I mean it doesn't look bad or anything but I don't know I do think up top kind of is a night looks nicer though uh, but before I do that let me grab my green gray again and just give a little give these rocks a little bit more character Mostly because they're in the foreground, and I would like them to look a little less part of the background. There we go. I think we will use some... I think I'll use a couple embellishments on the beach just to sort of offset the banner we're going to put up top. So we could actually tape this down, but I'm going to use glue... 
because everything else has been using glue today, and this is a fantastic glue. I'm going to just even that up, and I like how that looks. Let's just come in here. Any glue kind of seeps out. You can just take it off with your finger. You could, of course... If we hadn't glued this all down first, when this was free, you could have gone in and ink edged it to add a little more detail to it as well, depending if that is your thing. So I think all that we have left to do here really is clean off my glue bottle, because that's always important. But, I mean, I think the only other thing left to do here is embellish. And the nice thing is, though, even though this is a highly layered card, I think we're gonna. I'm going to go with the larger size. I'm going to put one here, and then I think I'll go in with the sort of medium size and just do that. I like. I like that. It looks nice to sort of have a little more. And while they're having it here, you can move them around a little bit. But these things are cool. I use them all the time. They're very low profile, as you can see, so they don't wreck mailing things. So anyway, I'm a big fan. Anyway, this is our card. This was made on um, the May 15th, but uh, you may be seeing this later. I will likely hold the video until the hop goes live, so you guys can take a look at that. And uh, thanks for checking this out. Have a great one.